In this video, we're going to learn how to properly assemble a mixer. Now, every brand of mixer is going to be a little bit different, but there are going to be some universal truths as we assemble this mixer. So, most mixers are going to come with three common attachments. There's your whisk attachment, your dough hook, and your paddle. And you're going to want to uh, match the attachment that you're using with the method that you're using. Our whisk attachment is going to be used to incorporate air into products. So I'm going to use this when I'm making things like whipped cream or meringue, where I'm really trying to incorporate a lot of air. My dough hook is going to be used for products that I'm trying to develop gluten in. So things like bread dough or pasta dough, where I'm trying to develop that gluten, this hook is going to help me accomplish that. Lastly, our paddle attachment is going to be used for things like batters or creaming where we're not trying to develop that gluten, but to mix together uh, a batter. So each of these attachments is going to connect to our mixer in the same way. And I'm gonna show you connecting the attachment with the bowl off, even though if we were setting this up for use, we would start by connecting the bowl, but I don't wanna inhibit your view. So each attachment is going to have a groove in the top. There's a round with a little groove that sticks out. This needs to line up with this metal piece that sticks out. So I'm going to line this up and press all the way up. I then need to rotate my attachment and allow it to drop down. This is now firmly attached to my mixer. To remove this, all I need to do is lift up, rotate the other way, and my attachment drops down. Many bowls are going to have a little button in the back. This button in the back will line up with this, uh, with this piece here. This will help keep the bowl securely in place. This bowl has two brackets off the side with holes that are gonna line up on these pegs here. To connect this bowl, I'm gonna make sure that the button in the back is facing the back. I'm gonna line up my two brackets here with the two pegs. Now you can see now this bowl is not secure. I can move this bowl around back and forth because I have to connect that button in the back. I'm gonna click this button into place. You've heard that nice click of connection and now my bowl is nice and secure. Finally, for this mixer, this bowl will come up and down. This allows us to uh, add ingredients to scrape down the sides of the bowl and then push the bowl back up for use. Some mixers will have heads that go up and down, uh, and the same is true uh, for them. That's so that we can uh, add ingredients easier so that we can scrape down the sides of the bowl. For this mixer, once the, uh, the bowl is connected, I then choose whatever attachment, attachment I wanted, line up my divot, and drop it into place. Pull my bowl up, and there's a switch on the side. This one goes from uh, zero to 10, stir being our slowest, and all the way up to 10. I always wanna make sure that I stop my mixer before I add a new ingredient, or especially before I scrape down the sides of the bowl. I would never want to uh, force a, a spatula or my hands or anything in the mixer while it's on. It's always best practice to stop the mixer, add your ingredient, and then go back on, or stop your mixer, scrape your bowl, and then turn back on, instead of trying to do that while the mixer is on. Let's review. When using your mixer, make sure you're using the correct attachment for the correct method. Next, when setting up your mixer, make sure the bowl is secured into place with all of the components lining up and clicked into place as necessary. 
Finally, when adding ingredients or scraping the side of the bowl, make sure your mixer is turned off before attempting them.